All right, so far so good. So what we've got working here is we have just a, a single one-dimensional array of values, right? We just have a line. If we uh, kind of mouse back over here, we've got a line. We're replacing this ty value with a noise value either from a texture or from a, a channel operator. We could use either one of those. It's pretty you know fun and exciting. So now, uh, you know, what else could we kind of explore with this idea? Well, the next thing that we might do is we might bump down here into our instances grid base. And let's build out another example. We're gonna do a similar kind of thing. In fact, let's go ahead and just borrow from our first example, this whole setup, because we're gonna do something real similar. And we can plop all that down in here. We'll see that, you know, oh my goodness, everything is broken for the moment. That's all right, don't worry. We're gonna fix that here in just one moment. Uh, the other thing we'll do, since again, we've already got it, let's go ahead and grab our line, our null, our SOP2. We can reuse that business if you don't want to make it all over again. And we'll connect this to a null. And there we go. Whew. Sweet, loving, fast ways of working. All right, excellent. So we've got our line down here at the bottom. Not so, not so bad. Okay, so what if instead of a line here, what if instead we work with, say, a grid? Not a GERD, but a grid. Now a grid, right, this is two-dimensional where a line is kind of one-dimensional, right? Just one big long set of values or, you know, a kind of nice big long um, set of values that happen one right after another in a single dimension. Our grid is going to exist in two dimensions. So we need to change a few things here in terms of how our grid set up. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this to be five and one. So I've got a, kind of a nice big long grid here. I'm going to do four rows, 20 columns. And if we make that pure active and hit W, we can see the wireframe of that. We can see what that actually is going to look like. So we might take that here and plug that into our null instead. Boop. And now what we should see over here is there are all of our little points. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna turn those up just a little bit. Not point one, not point one, not point one. And hopefully, yeah, that's way better. I'm also gonna put that back in the center of our screen and I'm gonna move our camera closer because we don't need to be nearly so far away from it now. Eh, a little further away than that. Yeah, well, there we go. Let's call that 7.5. Okay. So that's pretty all right. So now, instead of just moving, you know, one of these instances up or down, I want to do something a little more interesting. I want to be able to drive all of these instances. So yeah, how are we going to do that, Matt? That sounds really interesting. Um, I know, it's, it's going to be really fun and exciting. We could do a similar thing, right? We know that it's going to be in TY. So we could just use a noise chop for that, but what I want to start to think about and what I, I kind of want us to think about together as we're kind of wrestling through this is I want us to think about how we would take something that was two-dimensional in nature, right? So what if we had a noise top? And what if our noise top had a similar set of dimensions, right? What if our noise top was, say, uh, 20 pixels wide and 4 pixels tall, right? This looks like We've got matching aspect ratios here on purpose, not gonna lie. Okay, so that's handy. Now, we know that we can convert, we can, uh, convert that into tops here with a chop two. I'll make a little bit more room for all that. The one thing I do have to do now though, is I do, uh, I need to do a few, few things. First of all, we're just looking at one row here, so I gotta clean up a few bits and how this is working. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of these other channels. We're gonna say red is gonna be just TY. I'm gonna right click and force cook that. And I'm gonna change this to be immediate and cut paste. There we go. Thank you very much. Um, the other thing we're gonna do while we're in here is I'm gonna go ahead and swap this to B in my crop parameter. I'm gonna do full image. I want the whole thing. There we go. Trixie, Trixie. All right, so now what we've got is we have our rows of pixels, right? 
So this is uh, one, two, three, four rows corresponding again to the rows that we have over here. All right, so far, so good. Now the thing I'm gonna have to do is I need to shuffle these because if we look here at our top, or excuse me, at our um, sop to chop, all of our X valves are kind of stacked one right after another. And that's the idea that I need to get to. And we can get to that with a shuffle, right? We can do a little shuffle a -roo here. And our shuffle parameter is gonna to have to be set to sequence channels by name. And that's gonna put them in a row, bum, 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 bum. Excellent. We can do a similar trick that we did before, right? We'll use our math chop right here. We'll go ahead and plug that right into our math chop. Uh, again, what we need to do is we're gonna combine our chops with addition, and then we're going to uh, match them by channel name. So now we're only affecting the Y parameter, right? And sure enough, there we've got some exciting action going on. Now I'm gonna leave it up there for just one moment because we need to do a few other things to kind of sort this out. First things first, let's go ahead and in our common page of our noise top, let's turn this up to a 16 point our 16 bit floating point value. All right, that, that helps a lot. I also wanna go in here and I wanna to start to play with some of these parameters. Now I'm gonna to start to turn the periodicity of this down a little bit. I want the changes to happen a little bit slower over time. I'm going to change this to say, have one for the harmonics, one for harmonic speed. I think my harmonic gain, I wanna do say like not 0.3. And then amplitude, I wanna turn my amplitude way down here, I don't want too much kind of uh, movement in all this. And that's looking pretty all right so far. And yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy with that, I think. Now you'll see that if we, uh, yeah, uh, if we transform this, right? Let's say that we did a little transform in X, abs time dot. Now, if we looked closely at our noise, it's hard to see it noise this resolution. So let's add another noise top here so we can see this a little bit better. In a transform, if we translate this in x, abs time dot seconds, we can see how this is transforming, right? How we're kind of moving in x. And if we want that to be, you know, a little bit more predictable or kind of match our expectations a little more closely. We can see that um, here if we use a negative value instead. Well, let's go ahead and swap our expression here. Also, we can see that sure enough, it's gonna move that other way. Now, I think the period is still, it's a little too low here. We can turn it, yeah, there we go. Turn that up a little bit more. And what we should take note of is we should take note that our values are gonna kind of translate them their way down the line here, right? You can see that the, the same value gets passed all the way down all of our set of instances. Because we're really kind of imagining that our pixels are a, a grid, right? And our numbers are kind of scooting right along down our grid, which is pretty, pretty slick. And we can see that movement is happening here, starting the right, going to the left. Now we could, right, let's look at our transform first. We could swap that. Right, so we can take that expression out, and we put it in Y, and we can see now we're moving in a Y dimension instead. Let's try it here with our instances. Sure enough, we can see that those values get pushed up. We can actually even see a trail here a little bit. We could do it also in Z. Now, the interesting thing about doing it in Z is that this is a dimension that's much harder for us to kind of visualize with the texture especially a flat texture, because we're really only looking at it in two dimensions. And we're changing our seed value in a third dimension, which is complicated to visualize. That's okay, that's slick. We know that if we take a look at our uh, noise value down here, our noise top down here, we can kind of get a better sense of what that looks like. And in this case, we're kind of imagining that we're driving down the Z axis with our noise. So it looks like we're getting new numbers every time that they're, you know, they don't have a history. They're not uh, kind of presenting themselves right or left, top or bottom, but in fact, they're presenting themselves down the Z axis. And we just happen to not be set up right now to kind of visualize that. Okay, 
So that's pretty slick, right? We're not going to do too much more with this one. But the important kind of idea to hold on here is that we've built a correspondence, right? We've linked the idea of how noise works here inside of a 2D texture to how that would work here with our um, our grid points, our positions that we're using for our instances. And we can transform our values in the same way. Now, you might kind of very smartly say, you know what, Matt, it would really be lovely if those had a, a larger range, and I don't disagree with you. And so we, what we might do is we might add a math top here, or math chop, excuse me. And in our math chop, we might do the same thing, right? We might say 0 to 1 is going to be negative 1 to 1, and now we're going to have um, a value that sits more kind of in the middle of our screen. All right. So, so far, so good. This is some pretty good kind of stuff to kind of wrestle with, and this is especially... Uh, fun when we start to think about how we can transform instances, especially with something that is a texture. And, you know, again, the reason that we're kind of spending some time really holding onto that idea is that we're going to come back to that when we start working with GLSL materials and see that in a really powerful way. All right, so the next thing we might think about is this is all well and good, but you know, what's something that we can do with noise in a way that's going to be fun and expressive to kind of see in action? Hang on to your socks, and we're going to take a look at that next.